This video is brought to you by BossRootin.com and check out ProBoxingSupplies.com, PowerPerformanceProducts.com, and you're watching MMAInterviews.tv. Spencer Lazar at MMAInterviews.tv here at UFC 143 pre-fight. I'm alongside Misha Tate, Strikeforce 135 pound champion, got a huge fight March 3rd against Ronda Rousey here. Have you come to terms now that you fought with Ronda because you were outspoken that you felt like she didn't deserve the shot? Yeah, I, I didn't feel she deserved it as much as Sarah Kaufman. Um, you know, it's not that she's completely undeserving because what she has done so far has been impressive. And, you know, with her, her Olympic background, you know, we can't say, you know, that she's not a good athlete by any means. So, um, but I just feel it really boiled down to more of her talking than anything else. You know, more than her skills in the cage, her mouth is what sold the fight. And that's how she got here and not, not by winning the fights that she needed to in order to get here, you know, so. <laughs> There was some talk from some people I heard were on record saying they thought maybe maybe Misha's scared because she doesn't want to fight her. What do you have to say to those those people? Well, I mean, people are going to say stuff, and you know what I mean? They're going to try to come up with a reason to justify other than what the real reason is. And the real reason is is how I feel about the situation. You know, by me speaking my mind, you know, people say, oh, that's because she's afraid. You know, she don't want to fight her. But I wouldn't be the champion if I was afraid of people. You know what I mean? Nobody thought I was going to beat Marlus or even the people who did definitely didn't think I was going to submit her. You know, but I know what I know in my heart, and I know what I know in my mind, and I know what I'm capable of. You know, I believe in myself. I don't care what other people think or believe. So, you know, for me to have doubt in myself, would just be stupid at this point. I really believe I'm going to win this fight March 3rd. I believe in myself 110%. You know, the only problem that I've ever had, you know, with Rhonda is uh, one, being disrespectful. And for two, you know, I feel like she just kind of leapfrogged over uh, Sarah Kaufman. I feel Sarah Kaufman on paper was the next contender, next in line. And she jumped over her and, uh, you know, sold the fight mostly, you know, because she said she's marketable and she's this and she's that. And I mean, granted, yes, she won her four fights in a minute, submitted people, but the people people that she was beating are not number one contenders and the people that she was beating were not in our weight division unlike Sarah Kaufman who exactly it was the opposite she was beating people in her weight division she's 14 and one her only loss is the former champion that I just beat and she actually has a win over me so I don't see how people can argue can argue any other point that technically on paper the number one contender is Sarah Kaufman but who sells more I would agree it's Rhonda me voicing my opinion on that doesn't mean that I'm afraid of either one of them you know what I mean so I'm totally game to fight Rhonda um, that's what's gonna happen and I have my mindset on that and I'm not looking past her you know um, and hopefully one day I get the chance to avenge my loss to Sarah as well don't you think in a way though it is better for you with it being like you said the more marketable fight maybe you can make a bigger payday sponsors and whatnot possibly um you know with it being the main event and giving all the opportunity that we had you know i don't know if sarah and my fight would have been a uh, main event i'm not sure i can't really say um but i do know that where i'm at right now i'm happy with and you know whether that has contributed a lot to ronda or not i i don't know for sure i do know she sold the fight and a lot of people want to see it and uh, for that reason and I am thankful. What do you think your biggest advantages are? Do you feel like if it goes to the ground, you'll be the one on top? Will, will you look to shoot and take it kind of somewhere that people think maybe she might have an advantage with the grappling? I don't look to do everything. I don't think that she's better than me in any area. I really don't. You know, I feel like I've been doing this way longer. So, you know, how can she be better? Yeah, her judo might be better, but I have wrestling. You know what I mean? And wrestling really has been shown and proven to dominate overall in MMA better than judo because it translates better. We don't use a gi in wrestling. You know, the judo throws, a lot of it's based on collar grabbing and being this far away when you when you sweep and when you toss them and so you have room to clear the hips. And, you know, when you get in those uh, double unders, it's not to say that you can't do it, but that pretty much turns into wrestling. Wrestling. That's what freestyle is. That's what Greco-Roman wrestling is. You know, it's all about that position, you know, so um, You know people are so kind of wowed by her, but she's never fought anyone with a wrestling background Even and the people that she has fought that have had ground backgrounds even I still don't feel that we're quite on my level You know, I feel like I have world-class, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but I won nationals here in the United States for submission wrestling I went to Switzerland and uh, represented the United States uh, in the FILA World Grappling Championships, which is basically like the Olympics for submission wrestling because we don't have it in the Olympics so that's like a very elite level and I took a silver medal and I was also competing way heavier I was 142 and competing against 158 and a half pound girls I took a silver medal and I think that you know that's highly uh, underestimated you know people hear the Olympics and they're like oh wow you know and they hear 4-0 armbar minute win and they're like wow you know so everyone's wowed by this Ronda and like I can't wait to get in there March 3rd and show them why you guys are you know I mean I don't want to you know, be rude but like why you're wrong you know why this is a lot of hype. 
You have to have that confidence and you are the champion. Where is your camp? We'll talk about your training leading up to this fight. Um, I moved back home uh, to Washington uh, about I don't know, maybe six months ago, I'm not sure. And um, I basically, the idea behind that was to kind of get back to my roots. Um, and I've said, you know, it's just kind of amazing on my journey how I started and how I've grown and how the people who didn't used to be my friends are trying to be my friends. And, you know, you can't really tell like the real people from the fake people anymore. And so my my idea behind that was to move back home and uh, get, get uh, back to what I know. The people that supported me back when I was really a nobody, when I was an amateur, when I was and getting paid to fight you know people aren't looking for a percentage or looking for their f five minutes or ten minutes of fame off of me and uh, you know going back to that support system has been really nice it's really keeping me grounded and humble and I think that that's important you know as you get bigger to stay grounded and humble is you don't want your head getting too big and you know letting people fill you up with all this junk you know what they can do for you or whatever you know it's not about that for me it's about being the best athlete and the best fighter that I can be in and so you know I'm I'm proud to say that I'm back training at Yakima Mixed Martial Arts and uh, you know it's just a really small gym but full of a great a lot of great people and then uh, you know the idea behind that uh, afterwards I want to move to Southern California because I feel there's a lot of opportunity for promotion in and outside of MMA and uh, you know fortunately I don't get to fight enough you know being the champion and whatnot and having to fit me in on the televised slots you know I only get to fight like twice a year so I have a lot of downtime and I want to uh, find other avenues to expand and uh, do whatever I can do you know you only live once so I gotta make it make you know the most bang for my buck so um, I think Southern California is the place I want to do that and uh, training with uh, the opportunity to with a lot more women as well because I, I fight women I don't fight men so it's nice to be able to kind of gauge yourself a little bit when you train with women versus men it's a little harder to kind of tell exactly where you're at when you're always going against someone who's stronger and bigger and faster than you yeah. so well do you think maybe with Gina coming out and making a big star in Haywire maybe something in Hollywood is something in your future hey you never know I would definitely be up for it you know um, but my passion uh, is fighting I love it that's where my heart lies and that's what makes life worth living for me so you know there's a uh, you can't really put a price no tag on that, you know. So if I found something that made me feel just as good, you know, uh, I would definitely consider it. But uh, you know, for now, it's it's definitely the fighting that is what's making all this all worthwhile for me. Beautiful. Break down just how you see the fight, how you envision it happening, March third. You know, I spent a lot of time envisioning. I people ask me to, you know, oh, what music do you listen to when you work out? And I, I don't really, I don't ever listen to music because I'm so busy thinking about the fight when I'm running because that's what motivates me to run harder. You know, I think about, okay, this is the fifth round. I got to go really hard. I got to finish this fight and put myself in those situations and I visualize it. And uh, I visualize finishing this fight so many ways, every way from head kick knockout to arm bar to wear naked choke to ground a pound to elbows you know like every which way that I can think because I know I have to be prepared to do all of it I have to bring every tool that I have to the table um, in order to nullify the, her one strong point she's got the one strong point you know and that's her judo and you know her ground um, so I have to be prepared for everything um, I'd really like to, to knock her out because you know that would be awesome I feel like maybe I can knock some sense into her um, or winning by armbar obviously the irony of that would be you know kind of the icing on the cake so I'll take whatever I can get either way I'm coming for her and I'm coming for her hard well we look forward to seeing that March 3rd Strike Force in Columbus Ohio alongside the Arnold Classic thank you for the time Misha Tate I'm Spencer Lazar you're watching MMAinterviews.tv Godspeed and party on.